so uh, lecture 2 retaining wall in continuation to our previous lecture so now we will discuss another type of retaining wall that is cantilever retaining wall now see in the picture there is a retaining wall which is uh, looking just like a cantilever in the bottom there is a slab which is named as base slab that is basically just like a footing having toe and the heel portion and in the above the vertical wall that is known as stem and to connect the stem and the base slab uh, key one key is inserted which will uh, make the connection more efficient now this uh, retaining wall is uh, retaining the back fill that is shown behind the wall and the above this, this level is the ground level and this is back fill and uh, to drain out the water if uh, some water is available in the back fill or due to any uh, fall, any connectivity of water, so that water will be drained out through this drainage. And in stem, if the height of the stem is greater, then we have to provide construction joints. On the toe side, if you see, there is a ground level, and this uh, this ground level, this material, whatever is the type of material. It will be also applying some pressure and back fill will also apply pressure. <coughs> now the cantilever retaining wall, as I just told that it is composed of stem slab. This is stem slab and this one is the base slab. This type of retaining wall may be made up of RCC, precast concrete or pre-stress concrete. And construction can take place at site or some precaster component can be assembled at site. So that means precasting as well as casting people, both type of uh, construction is possible. It may be economically in comparison to gravity wall. You may be aware the gravity wall all the process will be taken care by the weight of the gravity wall. So that's why size of the gravity wall is larger as compared to the uh, retaining, cantilever retaining wall. Another important thing is, however, uh, cantilever retaining wall have their own benefits, but the construction, during construction, Efficient construction should take place. That means uh, construction need to be cast carefully. So, while designing a cantilever retaining wall, sliding failure, overturning failure, and bearing failure, all these type of failures we have to take into consideration. So, pressure, whatever be the pressure acting on the wall, we have to take into consideration that. The design of the wall should be such that it should be safe against sliding, overturning, or bearing into the soil. Now, see the figure here. First one is sliding. That means wall, uh, earlier we have discussed wall can slide away or it can overturn due to the movements or it can penetrate into the soil, that is, bear into the soil. So, your uh, retaining wall when we design we have to take into consideration all these type of failures so that our structure our cantilever retaining wall should be safe now another prominent type of uh, retaining wall which we will discuss that is counterfort retaining wall and buttress wall <coughs> now you see the figure here you will find there is a stem, it is just like a cantilever wall, similar to earlier wall. The cantilever portion is there, that means this is the stem. Now, heel slab is there, up to this it's okay. 
Now, the tamed earth will be on this side. So, what will we we observe if the retained earth its pressure is more? That means then you have to when you construct when you design then the length of wall and the height of wall will increase. And to compensate uh, the pressure from the retained earth, what we can do we can construct these inclined walls just like wall Lego structure. Uh, which we call as counterfort. So particularly, it has its own benefits. We will discuss now. Higher bending moment carrying capacity by the counter. So these counterfort will compensate or take care of accessory bending moment. Otherwise, you have to increase the height of the wall. Again, it is composed of stem work slab, base slab. And third portion is third component is counter foot. It's cantilever type and counter foot walls will act as a strengthening component that it will strengthen the stem, stem slab. Counter foot spacing now, spacing between the counter ports will be decided as per the requirement. That means, major benefit is this slab. This particular slab. Now you are when you are putting counter force, so that means what you are doing, you are decreasing the span of the slab. So that means we will be designing the slab. This slab will be designing form of some panels. Another important thing is counter force. These counter force are embedded in backfill. That means they are constructed behind the wall. That means towards the Retaining of the earth side. Counterfort divide the stem slab into smaller panels as I already discussed. Now these type of walls are efficient and constructed when height of the wall is in between 8 to 12 meters. So then they are more productive, more effective as well as economical. Now another important uh, wall is similar, it is just similar to this, similar to counterfort. But here we call them buttresses, not counterforts. Because you will see here the buttresses are in front of the wall, not behind the wall, as in the case of counterfort. So if they are just like counterforts, but the terminology used is buttresses. Now, earth will be retained this side, this is stem, and they are in the front. Buttress wall is similar to counter port retaining wall, but the support to the stem are in the front side, as already discussed. So, buttresses connect the stem. Now, what buttresses are doing? They are connecting the stem with the toe slab, but in this case, counter port connect the stem slab with the heel slab. So, this is the basic difference between them. Buttresses are structurally more efficient than counterforts, but in general, counterfort walls provide. Why? Because counterforts are behind the wall, they are not visible. Aesthetically, this wall will look better as compared to this. Because this is the front side, and front side, if you uh, you construct these type of buttresses, then they have their own disadvantage aesthetically as well. So, it is better to provide counterfort wall wherever will possible, or if not possible, if the conditions are not such that, then you can provide the buttresses wall. Okay. So now another important aspect of the design is that we why we are designing the retaining wall. So that means it has to retain various type of loads and here we will in this slide we will discuss what are the various stability parameters or that means what we have to consider while designing the slab uh, sorry wall retaining wall so that it should be stable now stability conditions 
to make the retaining wall stable. Retaining wall must be structurally sound to resist the lateral pressure by the axis. Design should be such that it should be safe against sliding and overturning as we have already discussed. Now, combined stresses due to all type of forces and loads should be lesser than the safe bearing capacity of the soil. Otherwise, it will not be possible to uh, get the stable retaining wall. To prevent the accumulation of water behind the retaining wall, backfill should be suitably drained by providing V poles, as we have already seen. Longer retaining walls must be provided with expansion joints we have already discussed at suitable sections. Now, what are the various type of loads which have the possibility to act when designing the retaining wall? Self weight of the retained wall need to be considered by the designer. Undoubtedly, in case of a gravity retaining wall, self weight is the most prominent factor or one of the most prominent factor. Second, vertical earth pressure. Now you have seen in the diagram that some of the earth is on toe side and other is on heel side. So we have to take into consideration all the vertical loads on the toe or as well as the heel. Then third point is lateral earth pressure. Now, lateral earth pressure may be active earth pressure, passive earth pressure, or at rest condition. So, we have to take into consideration lateral earth pressure while we design the retaining wall. Vertical and horizontal live load, which may be due to surcharge or any reason, they need to be incorporated in the design. Horizontal water pressure, if there is water, that means if the soil behind the retaining wall is saturated or uh, depending upon the condition of the soil, you have to take into consideration the water pressure. Vertical uplift pressure due to water table if any. So, whatever be the type of loads can act there and the possibility of the loads, you have to take into consideration effectively to make the air structure stable. So, in next lecture, that lecture 3, we will discuss about the design of retaining walls 